Yeah, good morning, everybody. I would like to welcome all of you also in the name of the FPF team. And thank you, Martin, for the nice introducing words. As Martin said, I'm going to talk about chemicals of concern that are used in, or listed to be used in food contact materials. Let me start my presentation with some words about the Food Packaging Forum Foundation. So, um, we are a charitable foundation founded two years ago, and our main function is science communication. We are focusing on the topics food contact materials, then one thing which is coming next, the chemicals which are used to make these food contact materials, their migration beh behavior into food and the effects towards human health. We are governed by a foundation board, so you have seen Martin, the president of the board, and um, this board is composed of independent academic scientists and one science communication expert. Our funding comes from donations, including from the packaging supply chain and other charitable foundations. And here you see the team. I think you have seen most of us this morning. So at the moment, we are four people working at the FPF. Coming to the topic of my talk, um, this summer we have published a scientific study on food contact substances and chemicals of concern. Um, it appeared in July, and we compared different inventories of food contact substances with known chemicals of concern, so chemicals that have hazardous properties. I will introduce the, the lists we have used and that's something important to follow the rest of the, the talk, so maybe you pay attention to the next two slides, or special attention to the next two slides now. So um, the food contact materials we have analyzed were on th three different lists, so two European lists and the American list, the Pew list. And um, I think you know most of these lists, so now I would like to use the pointer. Anyway, um, so the union list is um, a e EU legally binding positive list for plastic monomers. So it's the Annex 1 of the Plastics Regulation, number 10, 2011, that you probably all of you know. And it contains monomers and additives that are used for the production of plastics. Then the second list is more comprehensive. It's a bigger list. It's the ESCO list. And... Um, it's also Annex 1 of a report that was published by the EFSA Scientific Cooperation Working Group in 2011 also. And it contains chemicals that are used for the production of non-plastic food contact materials like paper and board, silicones, rubbers, um, printing inks, and so on. And it was compiled by member states of the EU and Switzerland and Norway, and um, it also includes some industry practice lists. And then the third list, comes from another continent, from the US, and it was uh, published by Tom Neltner last year, who will also give a talk today, and it's, um, it includes databases on direct and also, or the other way around, indirect and also direct food additives in the US, and further including food contact notifications, um, chemicals that are regulated under the threshold of regulation exempted, or they're not really regulated, they exempt they are exempted from regulation, and then grass notifications. Then the, the other side, so we analyzed lists that contain chemicals of concern. So first of all, we have used the SIN list, which is published by a Swedish NGO, ChemSec, and which was just updated yesterday, so my talk won't be completely up to date, unfortunately, but um, I will come to that later. So it contains substances of very high concern, which were defined according to the criteria under REACH. And REACH is, the, of course, the European Chemicals Regulation, which is not focusing on food context, contact materials. And the substances on the SIN list are either carcinogenic, mutagenic, or toxic to reproduction. They are persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic. Or they are very persistent and very bioaccumulative. <coughs> or they are of equal concern for example, they have endocrine disrupting properties. Then the se second list of chemicals of concern is the TEDx list. 
It is published and maintained by the, the Endocrine Disruption Exchange in the US, and it only contains potential endocrine disruptors. And the criteria to be listed on this list are not as high, I would say, so only one peer-reviewed toxicity study, either in vitro or in vivo, is sufficient for a chemical to enter the TEDx list. Shortly telling you something about the numbers of chemicals which are on these lists. Um, we couldn't use the lists as they are published in the internet, so we had to do something to be able to compare the chemicals with, with, with each other. So we extracted only those chemicals that have single class number entries. So that means we don't have any mi mixtures analyzed or chemicals that don't have a class number but are on this list are not analyzed. So finally, we have um, 873 CAS number entries on the union list, 1,577 CAS number entries on the ESCO list, and almost 6,000 um, CAS number entries in the PU list. On the other hand, um, we have around 800 CAS number entries on the SIN list or the TEDx list. And that's how, com how our comparison looked like. So we compared each list with the other. But um, so there were many more FCM chemicals and, and less COCs, as I mentioned, or as I call, will call them later on. Um, and uh, the intersection of these two groups, it came out that there are 175 chemicals that are on either one of the FCM lists and at the same time on one of the COC lists. So to show you just some more detailed numbers, so out of these 175, 154 are on the PU list and 92 are on the Union and ESCO list, so they are used in, in Europe. Then 119 are on the TEDx list and 69 are on the SYN list. And um, I think this number for the SYN list, the last one would increase because I just checked the chemicals which were added to the SYN list yesterday and um, I recognized some of the names, but of course I couldn't do the full comparison again. If you are interested in these chemicals, you can go to the supplementary material of the publication. So the details are hidden there. We couldn't publish them in the full paper and of course I cannot tell you all the details here, but um, you find them there easily. Um, to focus on some chemicals, we have chosen those 14 chemicals that are on, used or that are listed on all the FCM lists and that are also listed on, all, on both COC lists. And you see them here. So there are 14 chemicals and I think many of them are familiar to you. And we try to classify them just shortly to, to give you an overview. So there are some chemicals that are really mainly used as monomers for the production of, of plastics or other polymers, and then there are even more additives and some chemicals are used for both, like styrene or um, paratert, butyl phenol, or so on. Um, then we sorted them according to their, their hazardous properties, so all of them, since they were on the TEDx list, are suspected endocrine disruptors. And um, now I have to count. Six of them are also classified by the European Union as carcinogenic, mutagenic, or toxic to reproduction. So this is a real official classification that has been done some years ago. I think that's important to mention. Then something which is not included in the study, we um, were asked for, but you didn't investigate migration. Of course, we don't have a lab, we cannot do this, and it, it would be a major task to do it, but of course, there is also some data about migration in the internet, or in, in the scientific databases, of course. So we found, by quickly searching some databases, migration studies for the green marked chemicals, so for parabens, bisphen uh, bisphenol A, phthalates, styrene, and yesterday I got even more information, so I, I'm sure this is not complete, so we probably could mark more, more lines green here. Then um, we did a little bit more specific comparison focusing on the European side of, um, of all this data. So as I said, we used the SIN list first, which is based on European regulation, but then we um, also went to the real legal 
part. So we included the SVHC candidate list. What is it? It's the official candidate list of substances to be phased out from consumer products under REACH. So consumer products doesn't mean that they are going to be phased out from food contact materials. That's something important to say. Um, and the procedure how a chemical can enter this is that all member states can suggest chemicals to be listed on the SVHC list. And currently, yes, it has 155 entries. Then once a chemical enters the SVHC list, it can also move, move on to Annex 14. So that's a real authorization list under REACH. So once a chemical is on Annex 14, it has to be, or it has to get an authorization to be used. And um, the aim is to, to phase it out and substitute the chemical with other, hopefully less hazardous chemicals. So this list has 31 entries at the moment. And the, the common basis for all these three lists is that they have, they choose the chemicals according to the same criteria. So as I said before, either carcinogenic, mutagenic, toxic for reproduction, or persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic, or very persistent and very bioaccumulative, or of equi equivalent concern. So this is just one slide to, s to explain you the procedure one more time and the aims of this list. So the SIN list is an NGO list and it wants to speed up the legislative procedure. <coughs> um, furthermore, it wants to give guidance to companies on which chemicals to avoid and, and to replace in future. Once a chemical enters the SVHC list, um, the producer has the, um, the duty to inform anybody who is selling this chem or buying this uh, chemical. So um, once it is used in a product, people should know about it. And even the consumer can ask for this information. So it doesn't have to be listed on, cons on the final consumer product, but the consumer should, know, should be able to get the information. And chemicals on Annex 14 should really be phased out and substituted. And um, they can be authorized after or according to a certain procedure. A chemical on the SIN list, it doesn't have any legal consequences. It won't move automatically to the SVHC list. But of course, it m would be nice if, if the chemicals are recognized on the SIN list. And um, it's different. So once a chemical is on the SVHC list, it can move to Annex 14, and then it it's going to, oh, going to be phased out and authorized. The number of substances is expected to rise because the process just started a few years ago. The SINDIS just increased the number of chemicals listed and also the SVHC list is continuously getting new chemicals on it. So that's important to mention. We just have a snapshot of information in our publication, so it will change over time. Then one slide about food contact legislation and REACH. I said the FCM legislation is not covered under REACH with one, one main exception. And um, the main aim of the food contact legislation is to secure human health so that um, the materials and, and the articles that are manufactured do not release any substances that are harmful to, to the consumer, to the people who eat the food that is packaged in, in that material. So that's Article 3 of the FCM Framework Regulation. Um, to achieve this aim, the union list has a po or the union list is a positive list. So they say we have tested and authorized and checked all the chemicals on the union list. So we can ensure that they are safe. And um, the ESCO list is a start to reach this aim with, with other chemicals. So um, they at least, or it at least collects all the data and, and also the national risk assessments that have been done to help using the, these chemicals. On the other hand, REACH really tries to focus also on the hazardous chemicals, identifying chemicals that shouldn't be used in any products. And um, these are found on the SVHC list and Annex 14. And it's a societal and also scientific consensus that these chemicals are hazardous. 
And as I said, REACH does not cover the human health effects of FCMs, but it does cover the environmental aspects of FCMs. But that's not the focus of this talk anymore. So um, there is only a small intersection of these two legislations. But anyway, we mixed them up. We did a comparison and used the chemicals on the SIN list. So it's more than 800 now. At that time, we have used approximately 800 and found 45 substances to be used in food contact materials or listed to be used. We don't know if they are used. Um, out of these 40, uh, 54 substances, 24 are on the SVHC list, and six are even on Annex 14. So six of these substances are going to be phased out in this computer and many other things you find in this room, but they are not going to be phased out in consumer uh, in food contact materials. If you want to have more information about these chemicals, you find them in the second table of the supplementaries. And here again, I just show you some of the, the chemicals which we have found. So the six chemicals that are on Annex 14. So there are four phthalates. There is um, methylene dianiline, so MDA, and Chris 2 chloroethylphosphate TCEP. And again, we classified them according to their use and their hazards. So all of them are CMR. So all of them have been classified by the European Union to be carcinogenic, mutagenic, or toxic to reproduction. All of them are used as additives and not as, as monomers. And all of them are on the ESCO list, and four of them are on the union and the ESCO list, on both lists. It has to be said that all of them are, are, have some restrictions or specification how they are supposed to be used. So you cannot just put them in and, and go to the highest level which is allowed, the highest migration limit that is allowed. So all of them have certain restrictions. Again, four of them. For four of them, I've quickly found migration studies. This is, again, not part of the paper. And um, for the other two, there might be also some, some more information we will see or do that in more detail in future. So I'm coming to the concluding remarks. So um, two main messages. We have identified 175 chemicals of concern that are found in food contact material inventories. And these chemicals include CMRs, endocrine disruptors, and persistent and bioaccumulative substances. Out of these 175 chemicals, 21 are used, or supposed to be used in food contact substances, according to the lists. And they um, are identified as substances of very high concern under REACH. Six of them are already intended for phase out for consumer products. And these numbers are definitely expected to rise in, in future. And I would also like to, uh, to end with two questions that are only two of many other questions which came into our mind. So um, it's something maybe also to discuss. So are we really as a society willing to accept chemicals and food contact materials that are going to be phased out under reach so that are quite accepted to be hazardous? And um, the, a less general but more specific question, if I would be a small food food packaging manufacturer, can I really comply with Article 3 of the framework regulation if I use anything from the S ESCO, ESCO list and if there is no proper risk assessment done and if I know on the other side it has been listed on one of these chemicals of concern lists. So that's something to also think about. With that, I would like to thank you and I'm open for questions.